is going on, everybody? And welcome back to Salty Run Back here to be your weekly intake of North American Developmental League of Legends. We have finished our first week of competitive North American League, including the open qualifiers for the uh, the NACL NACLQ, and of course the first week of the LCS Challengers League. We saw some fearless draft, we saw some big Swiss upsets, and we're here to cover all of that and more on a very special episode of Salty Runback Post. Tier 3 tonight premiere. Well, I'm sure we'll get to talk about that a little bit um, as we continue on. My name is Grapes. I'm here alongside Hawk. Hawk, it's been a busy-ass week, but I'm glad to close it out here as we get ready for week two to start it all over. You know, Grapes, it's been a long one. It's been a haul, but I will say it has been a fantastic week. Tier 3 tonight, the premiere, I think went exceptionally well, uh, especially considering, you know, the, it was only the first week. Our 75 slug run of show, uh, that, that we put out, we we did it. We put that whole thing on and uh, were able to talk about Tier 3. It was such a joy. Um, and I had a pretty good week otherwise, personally. So I'm, <laughs> I'm doing pretty good uh, despite my exhaustion here on this Friday evening. Yeah, I, I know we I knew we kind of planned a lot for ourselves here on this platform and just yes. with the two of us overall, Hawk. But it's been it's been a grind this first week. We had Tier 3 tonight, we had CeeLo Central, and now we have Salty Runback. So that's three separate pieces of content in order to check things out. Um, you know, it's, 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 we're, we're, we're getting there. And the crazy thing is, as we release this, the LCS is about to start for week two. And that means yep. that our cycle will begin again, and we're excited to get right into it. If you did not watch our first episode of Tier 3 tonight, uh, you can go over to the LCS underscore Challenger Twitch VOD. There will be a YouTube upload somewhere. We're just trying to finalize the location of that one, but there should be a place eventually for you to catch the VOD on YouTube if you're unable to watch it live. And, of course, make sure to stay tuned as well for next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern for another episode of Tier 3 tonight where we break down everything that happened in GSL group stage for the first week of it so a lot to talk about there but let's start by breaking down what happened in one hawk because a lot happened in that first yeah. week as we will get into our headline it says four nacl best of threes took place two of them being two zeros two of them being two ones four teams came away victorious whether that be cincinnati fear maryville wildcard or fly quest challengers out of those four teams hawk which of them made the biggest statement here in this first week you know, Grapes, there's a very obvious answer, and it's the 2-0 over Team Liquid, which was, that That was Maryville, right? I get, sorry, I get confused. That was Wild Card. That was Wild Card, thank you, thank you. It was Wild Card who had the 2-0 over Team Liquid. Maryville, right, okay. I've got my, I've got my mind straight. Wild Card came out swinging, a team that people thought would be at the bottom of the table. Team Liquid, a team that a lot of other people thought would be at the top of the table. Maybe not all of us. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it was a it was a huge, big honking win right there by uh by wild uh wild card, and not just in two one, right? It was a two zero sweep. That is a massive week one saying, "Hey, we're here to play." Yeah, some close games in that two zero, but overall, a very very strong performance from wild card overall. I want to shout out win. Um, in the jungle throughout those first two games, like yeah. um, it it just it felt so good to have him back in this in this game, man. And, and he was on the Jin Zhao game one, played Sejuani in game number two, and it didn't matter. He was just kind of doing winny things. He was doing winny felt, things. It felt really good for for him to be back in this league. Um, against Kiel, performed admirably. Um, and wild card, they they kept things a little bit wild as well with the draft. They had the Quacker Darius yep. in game number one, which went pretty crazy into the Udir, I will say. Um, if teams are looking for an Udir counter, that's definitely one that you could throw out there. And then the Aaron and Doxa Seneyasso in game two as well. That um, just just warmed my Which, heart, man. I'm glad we got to see Doxa play a carry. It, I know. Like, it's so funny. Support. Like, you know, if you have your a guy that swapped from mid lane to top lane to support, like, don't put him on a support champion. Just put him on Yasuo. <laughs> like, you know, it, like big brain. Like, it, it was so fun to watch. I think that was a big thing for me as well about that wild card win and why it was such a statement. Is like, you know, they didn't just win. They didn't just win 2-0. And they didn't just beat a team that people thought will be good. But it's, I think it is the fashion in which they did it. Wild card came out. They played their game. I know, Grapes, that was something that you were excited about for them uh, with that slew core was that hopefully they would look pretty good initially with their synergy. And I, I think they proved that a lot. And that really was like, if wild card is going to win more series in the challengers league this year, that's exactly how they have to do it. And I was a big fan watching those games back. Yeah. Makes things even um, for, for St. Louis look good because that's your core doing well against 
an LCS affiliate in Team Liquid Challengers, which is very impressive. Um, we'll talk more about Team Liquid a little bit later, but yeah, we just want to show our flowers to Wildcard for a really, really spectacular first series. I hope to see a little bit more out of them as well later on. I do think the synergy thing is going to be important. You, you mentioned Maryville as being the other team. They have very similar logos, you know, the M and the W. Yeah, yeah. They're, like both they're both red. I got my red yeah. teams confused. <laughs> like, it's but understandable. That, yeah, but that, that's another team. Although they actually came in with UG Spyrax, which I think makes a lot of difference in people's expectations and where they will be placed. Definitely. Um, having them all together as a unit, I presume they're all playing in like their facility together. It seemed like that actually helped those teams specifically, like those collegiate squads, those teams that played together a lot yeah. um, in this first week, which makes a lot of sense. And maybe a hot take gives me a little faith for Lit Esports today as they face off against Supernova, another like lower seeded versus higher seeded team in terms of audience expectations. Maybe having that group of five would help them out a bit. Yeah, definitely. I, I do think it's funny as well for Maryville. They we we power ranked them tenth on like Friday night for a, a Saturday upload, and then they announced this like different roster that we probably would have power ranked higher, and then they looked really good. So that's like yeah. unfortunate. You know, we look a little funny for that. I well, we, we have heard have that that question. roster may not be final though. I have a question for you though. With this current group of five in the NACL, Niles, UG, Spyrax, Scary Jerry, and Zyko. Where do you put them in your power rankings? Because we had them like what seventh or or no, we had them we had like them tenth. Last, we had them. We had yeah. them last. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would have them sixth. Between okay, between so you have them. Team Liquid and Fear. So you think they're better than the St. Louis core in Wildcard? Yeah, as well. I do. Okay. I think I think with That's with the biggest thing for me is I think they just have upgraded so massively in top and jungle. And Spyrax, like, I mean, I think Get Back is a very good player. Spyrax is probably the better mid laner. I mean, like, based on performance last year, Spyrax was the better mid laner. So, like, they have just, and, and really, like, I, I think having Niles in top lane is such a big deal for this team. I think Yuji, I mean, like, top five in MVP voting for, like, four consecutive splits or something crazy. Like, it's hard to really, like, that Whoa. all of a sudden is a very good team. I mean, they're they're now very much, in my opinion, in that like AOE fear like mix. Sorry, but I you think mean Wild the TL fear mix, uh, Graves. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, like that that whole middle of the pack actually is very interesting. It is, especially it is. now with Wildcard also performing well. So now, like, there are gonna be two very unhappy teams that go to the promotion tournament after after yep. this split. Like even more so than usual. Yep. Um, I actually had a different. Uh, biggest week one statement that I think can segue us into our second topic because I think FlyQuest actually did make the biggest statement in their win over the <laughs> They look damn that was good. Even more of a dominant 2 0 than we saw um, from, you know, even, even Wildcard against Team Liquid. And that was against DSG, a team that a lot of people, including me, had very high expectations for. Um, but they performed very well. Quad surpassed a lot of what people maybe were hesitant about in the mid lane. And now they play against another team that people were very excited about in Team Liquid as we get head into our second headline yeah. here. It's very interesting that because this is a single round robin tournament, we are not going to see Fly play against Team Liquid Challengers or Disguised after today for the rest of the split. But that's just kind of the position that we're put in. And we have to talk about this matchup here now. Our two LCS affiliates between Team Liquid and FlyQuest. Um, of course, both of them having very different weeks, as we mentioned. Do you feel like, Hawk, this is almost a must-win, or at least a must-take-a-game off of uh, for Team Liquid here in this series? Um, That's a really interesting question, because... I don't think FlyQuest is a must-take-a-game for any team. I'm going to be so honest. I think what we saw last week from FlyQuest was the FlyQuest out of hell, the doomsday scenario, where Chime is playing it at an LCS level. You have Shaden and Surti just being, like, better than their opponents in the top lane. Quad looking like, you know, a very mechanically talented Korean import. And Sajed did his job with a very, very good support in Chime and was able to hang in there. And, and yeah, they kind of embarrassed disguise i mean like i really like chime played out of his mind in particular to me um that support performance was was pretty impressive and so like i and based on my expectations for team liquid like no i don't think they have to take a game because i don't know if i expect them to <laughs> you know um i i think for team liquid i really Put, I'm more. I was more concerned by the wild card to zero, right? Like that to me right. would do way more like alarm bells in my head than getting two would by fly. You know, if they get two would by fly, it's like, damn, you looked bad in week one, and then you played the best team in week two. What happens in week three, right? 
Um, yeah. So I think that's where I'm at as far as the series is. I, I, I hold Fly as the overwhelming favorite. I think the reason that I'm phrasing the question this way is just because after a 2-0 loss to a team like yeah. Wildcard that people had low expectations for, if you are somebody who is expecting a lot from this TL team, you want to at least probably see them Right. With that week of scrims under their belt, come out with a, a bit more firepower I, this I mean, time. I would certainly hope that Team Liquid doesn't embarrass themselves, right? Like, that, that is important. But, but to me, right, it's like, prove to me in the next seven weeks following, or, yeah, that sounds right, next seven weeks following, yeah. next seven matches following, that you just shit the bed in week one and you played the best team in week two. You know, like, that, that to me is where I'll be at for this team. I would like, I would definitely like to see them at least take one. I think that would... All right. Uh, put some confidence back into um, just like those players specifically, you know, starting off 04. No matter who you are uh, playing against, you can like tell, tell yourself, oh, it's fly, fly challenger. You get a little pressure built on top of you, especially with all the expectations that they had initially. Um, I think, um, yeah, I hope we see a little bit more um, out of TL. I think th like their, their games against Wildcard were like, they were just kind of, Meh. I don't know. They kind of just were 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 very flat footed a lot of the time. Like Romer yeah. had like a, a solid Tristana performance in game two. That's like the only memorable like like game out of any of those players that I remember though from that series. And, and that is I, I so here's something I can say about this series is I need to see Jenkins and and spawn Kim Down bounce back because Kim Down did not play a good series, looked like the beginning of Spring Split last year again. Spawn did not look like the LCS veteran that he is. Jenkins did not look like the LCS veteran that he is. I think whether or not you're taking a game, like I, I need Team Liquid side lanes to remember that they're good League of Legends players because re if you cast your mind back to our last episode, Graves, that was where we expected the yeah. consistency to come from for this team. And actually, I think the fact that Romer had a pretty good performance is reassuring. Uh, I think Dark Wings is probably in like the middle of the pack of mids for challengers. So it was good that Romer was able to have a nice game. Um... You know, I think Keel was fine. <laughs> you know, like it, it is, it was what it yeah. was. I so I, I do. If I'm gonna set an expectation for this series, like Jenkins, you can't just get rolled over by Surdy. Um, I don't care that Surdy is the best top player in the league. You can't get rolled over by him. And I think same thing for Spawn and Kim Down is like, hey, go punish that rookie in bot lane and actually show me something against him. So, so maybe that's the expectation we can set for the series is whether or not they win a game, like. I need to see some performances out of these side lanes. Yeah, I, I like that. Signs of life, I yeah. think maybe is a better way to put it. Like, yeah. Make sure that we see some good things out of this Team Liquid uh, you know, team, even if it's not necessarily a win. A close game, something like that. Um, although I, I do think it will be it will be close. I'm expecting this to be one of our best series of uh, of the week, which I think, you know, LCS, also? they also think is going to be one of the best series of the week because they have it coming right off the first day of LCS. So yeah, um, yeah that, that's kind of, I guess, where we're at. Last thing. Before we move on to OQ discussion, what do you think about Fearless Draft? Do you think did you did you notice it at all when you were watching it? I didn't feel like I noticed it a ton. Um, I also <laughs> I watched all the vods, not the live streams. So I, I did, like I did most mostly of vods as well. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't notice it too much, but I will say, even despite watching the vods, like it didn't feel like it had a huge impact. But also, I think it's really hard for pros when the season's only been out for at the time of the games being played like a week and a half to innovate. So I'm willing to give it a bit more time. And, and like, obviously I don't think it's a bad thing yet. Just, I no, I did not inherently notice it in week one. Yeah. I, I think you saw some creativity, like yeah, the, the yeah. Yasuo, as we talked about, but I don't think that, but I don't know that was fearless draft, right? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I feel like the more we watch, especially as we get to like best of fives and as, as players start to like, kind of understand the meta a little bit better. Maybe things will 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 change. I would agree. But I think it is it is cool to see like everyone play a different champion each game. Yeah. Um, that way we can't have the narrative of like oh this guy's just like a jack swan, you know. So at least uh, helps the players out a little. Definitely but agree. We can move on yeah, to yeah. to our next topic. Let's talk about the qualifiers again. I know we spent a lot of time discussing this during tier tonight, as well as just like all the, the meetings and stuff that we've had throughout these last couple of days, Hawk. So it might feel a little bit redundant, but for the viewers who haven't caught all the open qualifiers. Um, let's talk about one big surprise team and one big team that disappointed you coming into this weekend. Okay, Grapes, I want you to cast your mind back 
to uh, the reveal show or either on our episode, either the reveal show or our last podcast episode when we picked an underrated, I think it was on our last episode where we picked an underrated, underseated, and an overseated team. And mm -hmm. both of us agreed that the overseated team was UCI and that the underseated team was Purdue Northwest. My biggest surprise is UCI coming out and looking like some ballers and Purdue Northwest, who I said was underseated at 16, diving out at 2-3. Um, yeah, I think there's probably more obvious answers than that, but I just want to really directly address that the teams that we picked as over and underseated directly proved us wrong in both directions, which I think oh, is yeah. very comical. <laughs> yeah, I was very impressed by UCI in their they games. They looked good. Um, it, again, like we talked about on the show, we'll talk about it again here really quickly. Just the fact that with the exact same roster, they went 2-3 and 1-4, it didn't give you a lot of hope going in. And also, um, I, I, we understand that you know, the, the field might look a little bit weaker, especially towards the middle of the pack, but I don't know, you, you see a, a team performance, like, underperform despite being ranked high, and you think, oh, maybe the same thing's going to happen again. And I could not be happier just to say that that was not the case, yeah. because Sina and, like, Gorka and Lightpulse specifically, I don't, I think the top side, like, played pretty fine throughout the entire... The no, but the, the bottom lane and mid lane played, played yeah, Those guys were awesome the entire swiss bracket i mean we saw a, a bunch of those games that last light pulse ultimate is still like kind of gonna be in my head rent free for like maybe the next couple of weeks um you see i was went four and one and now they are one of the top seeds here in this group in in the group stage and that is very exciting yeah absolutely i mean uci like like truly I, I i my expectations were just low because last year you talk about the the two three and the uh the one four but then also like they didn't look good in sea lol it's the exact same roster no changes like yeah it's just hard to believe in a team when when they seem like they've almost forgotten how to win for lack of a better term so so the fact that um they looked great is is really reassuring to see yeah another surprise i think morning star white uh also yep. going four and one that surprised some people including a win over winthrop which Definitely was not on a lot of people's radars. Um, they played very well. Their top side in Yusin and Seoul specifically were very impressive. AH, um, their AD carry, also had a couple of very solid games. And I think the, the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway is that um, even though these guys are, are all kind of solo queue players and haven't had a ton of competitive experience, they all definitely still are going to be a very dangerous team in the queue. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we saw that this team has more than enough individual skill to stack up to any team in this qualifier. I think the Winthrop game in particular proves that. Like, they they have the hands. Whether or not they're able to come together as a team to be able to consistently beat the top dogs, I think is going to be the biggest question moving forward. But, I mean, particularly, you you know, we talk about players like Yushin and Sol. Um, yeah, they, they've got the hands, and they... Uh, at the very least, this to me feels like this Morningstar White team feels like Dare Gaming from 2022 Spring, where it's actually oh, a lot of super talented players that no one had ever heard of that are going to play one tournament together and then all get on better teams in the future. Like that, I could see that happening with this team. You know what wow. I mean? Man, what a throwback. That was Limo, BMFX. That had Limo, BMFX, Earth. yep. Yeah. There are some Very good cool. players on that team. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see them stick together. I mean, they seem I mean, like they're all pretty good friends from solo queue, at least. Yeah. So, I would um, love if they did stick together. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Just like to me, that that feels like the vibe though of like this is like a a, a team that is all like making their mark together of, of players that are showing what they've got. Yeah, I mean they they played really well, but mechanically specifically, they are all like very high ranked in solo queue. Um, they have Coach Mist, who is you know hundred next and. and geniuses in all those places yep. um i heard they all common chinese as well which was fun i talked to soul that's what he said which was interesting it's a nice thing to it's an interesting thing to kind of uh think is it's like a you know a different perspective here um teams that disappointed there were definitely a couple um <laughs> you have sleepy collars and golden grubians who were or grubians i should say 10 and 11 seed that both missed out uh golden grubians they both actually got eliminated in round four with losses to the 31 and 32 seed, respectively. Yep. That is not where we expected these guys to be. Yeah, that's tough. Um, I don't really have much else to say. It was just not, it was not their OQ. Uh, we always have a couple teams like that. I'm hoping to see these teams bounce back, especially CP Collars, a team that is made up of, I think, some pretty young, talented players. So um, yeah. would like would like to see them come back. Also, Grapes, just another disappointment to throw out there real quick. Throw, throw another team under the bus just for good measure. Uh, Oklahoma Christian going 05, that is a tough scene as well, because they were like the 20 seed. 
Yeah, they were 21, and they, they <laughs> ended up playing the 17th seed and good at playing the 04 game, which might be a testament to the, the committee and how hard it is to rank some of these teams towards the bottom. Um, but yeah, uh, a little unfortunate for them. Hope to see them bounce back as well. A lot of teams that we could talk about. I mean, we didn't even mention like abandoned kittens or clown gaming who are 25. And we want to talk about like Winthrop University up. too. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, Winthrop's losses were like they weren't like again. They were against Morningstar, who we thought were a very good team, right? And then, and then they also lost against BlackRock, who ended up going five and zero. So I feel like like those losses. Although like their their gameplay wasn't exceptional in those games, like like Yusin kind of destroyed Denethor in that last uh, matchup, obviously, which is not what we we're expecting. Um, I feel like we can give them a pass, and then if they continue to show some struggles, TFT included, um, then we could like start talking about them a little more. Yeah, I I, I would hope that they'll be fine. Just it was not what we expected from Winthrop as well. Um, but yeah, yeah. yeah, like they they should be fine. I still consider them a favorite to get out of the group and everything. So. Yeah, speaking of, we could talk about this upcoming uh, group stage for NACL qualifiers, and we're going to kind of phrase this a little bit differently because we always do what's the group of death, the group of life, things like that. What's a player, Hawk, that you got to watch a little bit of in the Swiss stage, but now going into groups, you want to see more of them, and you're excited to watch them here this weekend? Lotus Mixture, Abandoned Kittens bot lane. Am I biased because I recorded content with the Abandoned Kittens bot lane? Absolutely, but those guys were a lot of fun, and uh, I hope they play well. That's the answer. <laughs> That's it. That, that mixture, I mean, Abandoned Kittens bot it, lane. I, I'll leave some mixture, for you. There's a few more that I could answer, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, we can talk about them a little bit if you want. Mixture, the, the Lotus support, was on a team that um, was kind of around the middle of, like, between 4-1 and 3-2 in terms of seeds. They ended up performing pretty well. Mixture had a crazy Senna game. He went like 11, 1, and 10 against UCI, another team that performed very well. And I feel like people might be sleeping on them a little bit because they have some very, very talented players. Their bot lane maybe was a question mark coming in when they had like Psycho and Mixture or Forsen, I guess is what it's being called now. But they're 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 very talented top to bottom, it seems. Oh yeah. I would definitely agree. This Lotus team. I know I like predicted against them for content for Group D, but this is a team that I think I I think I was one of the ones that actually seated them higher on the committee than some as well. I I'm actually very high on this Lotus team, um, so I'm very excited to see them continue playing. I was glad to see them uh, have a good performance in the qualifier. Let's see, who's a player that I'm excited to watch a little bit more? I'm gonna go actually, maybe a different direction. I want to see more of of Crimson up in the top lane for CCG. Ooh. Not necessarily because like I was particularly impressed by his performances or anything. I think CCG had a very mild performance in the OQ. They like went three two. They, they lost to. It Lotus. was a pretty like mean, as in like mathematical mean or like median, whatever. Like yeah. it was a pretty median OQ performance. Like they were fine, you know. <laughs> like um, yeah, and, and I think Crimson had some some decent performances, and you know. Some games were kind of whatever, but I feel like this is a guy that has been hyped up a lot. Of course, partly due to his his lineage, but then also just to like the extent of like a like a skilled player that we've seen at times when he. But it seems like he's never had the right team to yeah. like really give him that opportunity to succeed. The last time he was a starter was on that Radiance roster that everyone was super excited about in the mid lane, and then he ended up that team ended up kind of falling apart. Um, and I think the last time we saw him in comp was on Team Fish Taco as a sub for one game in the spring split. Um, that sounds right to me. I, I think that was, I think the last time we've seen him play. And I want to see more of, of Crimson. I, I think I was impressed at times by the stuff that he was able to put out. And so they have Ottawa, who took a series last season, going all the way to top 16. Um, both of those teams returning a lot of their players. And then they have the addition of Purdue Northwest um, in that conference as well. They've always kind of been solid in the MEC, but now with their newfound roster, um, at least the power rankings agrees that they're above Grandview at least a little bit at this point in time. So that's three very strong teams that could also make the uh, the championship in one conference, which is exciting. Yeah, that that is exciting. I do feel like uh, MEC, I guess, is like an East Conference light where there is no runaway favorite. And there are a few solid teams that should be very competitive with each other. So I, I, I would agree with that. Like, I think really the, the, the thing to take away from this discussion is like there are a lot of very competitive CELO conferences this year. It does feel like, I mean, 
the talent is very diluted this year because we had a lot of talent come into collegiate, not a whole lot leave. So it basically like we had strong players go to strong schools and then, you know, the players that aren't playing for those schools anymore, some of them went to different ones, right, to continue their career. So um, yeah. we've got like a lot of talent. I mean, like, I feel like sometimes we release the power rankings, uh, or I say we, I feel like sometimes the CLO power rankings get released uh, last year by the committee that was doing that. And like, it was really only like the top X that mattered. And while I think we do have a clear top six this year, I would say like 14 of the 16 teams on the top 16, I think could all reasonably make top eight at CLO this year, which is really cool to see. Yeah, I, I'm very excited for the CLO season. We're going to cover a lot more of it here on Salty Runback. As you might have seen on our socials, CLO Central coming out every Friday night. We just did our first episode yesterday um, with uh, US University of St. Thomas getting that 2-0 win over Duke. And next week, we'll be doing ISU Bethany, which is an exciting one of those uh, inter-conference yeah, matches one. that we should um, be watching over on our show. So make sure to stay tuned to that Friday nights around 7.30 to 8 p.m. Eastern uh, for more CLO. But... That's enough CeeLo for now. We'll keep track on that as the rest of the regular season goes on. Uh, instead, we're going to head into our part two, where Hawk and I are going to be playing Fantasy NACL. We'll see you there. The season might have already started, but that doesn't mean there's not enough time for Fantasy NACL um, in a little bit of an abbreviated format. Of course, there's only two of us here, but we're going to try our best to draft some teams and get to root for some specific players as we progress throughout the NACL regular season. Hawk, what are we doing here today? Because I actually, fun fact, I've only been a part of one fantasy league ever in LCS and it was completely auto draft. So I kind of don't really know what's going on. Ah, so you're an amateur. Perfect. <laughs> Gives me an advantage. Maybe I can actually win one of our mini games for once. Although I maintain that I won our player draft last spring split. Anyway, all right, uh, well, we can explain what we're doing here with Fantasy and ACL. Like you said, the season may have already started, but we can have a little bit of a head-to-head -head grudge match. It's not a league. It's just one-on-one, -on -one, mano y mano, and it's going to come, of course, with some salty run-back twists. So we're each going to draft a Fantasy Challengers League team, making up one player from each and every role. The catch is that we can only draft one player from each team, meaning that we must at the end, have drafted one player from every single Challengers League team to complete our rosters. Points will be determined at the end of the entire regular season. So instead of being, doing a head-to-head -head each and every week, we're just going to accrue it at the end, and that's going to be the fantasy grudge match. You can look at the screen and see the point bonuses. Uh, everything is basically the same as the default on Sleeper if you play Fantasy LCS. We just added a fun bonus, plus five for Pentakill. We also took out all the team bonuses because we want like individual player expression and stats to be the only metric that we're looking at here. Um, and then finally, we're going to do the picks and bans. Again, much the same way as in Sleeper. If a champion picks said champion that... Uh, that was picked for them, they will get double points. If they pick a band champion, uh, they will get half points. So that's the whole format. And then the end of the season, we'll calculate it all up. We'll do a headline about it, much in the same way as Salt Street bets in the past. And we'll get to see who drafted the better players to their fantasy team. I'm starting to, I'm, I'm, I'm just realizing now, gonna be a lot of like Google spreadsheet calculation math that we're gonna have to do at the yeah, end. A little bit. There's, you there's know. not people doing it for us, but that's a okay. A little bit of calculation. We can use yeah. like Leaguepedia and stuff like yeah. stats. I'm pretty, I, it shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> I guess the, the cool twist here is the picks and bands because not only are they um, like, you know, going to take away points here and there, they also last through the entire season. Whereas in Fantasy LCS, it's only for one week. So we're gonna have to try to predict the meta almost. So like yep. what we going to become popular because if something just immediately gets nerfed on like 14.2 which is actually what the NACL is going to be played on today um that means that we're, we might not see as much of that champion in terms of uh popularity so that is always something that, that I'm gonna have to start thinking about um we're gonna draft in snake order Hawk I think you're gonna go first we could jump right into this one yeah, the catch of course is right again right before we go um is that only one player can be selected from each team so we each have to have five players one each of the 10 NACL rosters. So if you pick up one a player, it does cut off your opportunities to go for any. So um, that I think is going to cause a lot of very interesting conversation. Hawk, it is. with the first pick, who are you going with? All right. With the first pick of the 2024 NACL draft, Hawk cast selects. I didn't think about this out of time. I need to look really quick. 
<laughs> I'm trying to think because there's a balance, right? Like you want just the best player, but you also want the best player on the best team. Uh, like to deny because like it's like okay, if I pick yeah. this player, who does Grapes then not get to pick? And Grapes is gonna get to turn around and pick two straight players. So I want to think about this for a second. And okay, I think. I know what I want to do. All right, with the first pick of the 2024 <laughs> NACL draft, Hawkcast selects Surdy in the top lane. Ah, a FlyQuest Challenger player being selected first. I can't say I'm surprised. No. Uh, Surdy going with a 1 1. He is top lane 1, I guess, if we're going with fantasy terminology. Um, makes a lot of sense. He, you now deny me the opportunity to pick Shade and Quad or Chime or Sajed, um, who all were looking looking very good. So that's a little unfortunate for me. I know. I was thinking. I, I was in particular thinking that Quad and Chime were very high value or Shade. Yeah, honestly, anyone very high value for their respective positions felt to me right to deny those. Okay, so now I'm in a bit of an interesting situation. What do I want to go with my wraparound? Because I have the first pick here and the second mm -hmm. one I start off in the snake. I feel like mid lane is a pool that I am a little bit worried about losing. And so because of that, I am going to pick Young from Disguised here Okay. with my first pick. So that is, that is our Disguised player. Our DSG player is going to be Young. And then... I'm going to go, mm, shoot, who am I going to go next? I know, this is tough. Like I'm going to go Faisal from Supernova. Oh, you dick! <laughs> so now, Shochi and Young are both off the board for you. And I feel like alongside Quad, they are some of the more exciting mid laners that we have here. You're an ass for that. <laughs> hey, people say NA, NA mid lane and NACL week so i'm just gonna i'm gonna try to use that to my advantage here in this that's tough um it's fine you're just denying top laners from yourself oh wait you just picked faisal what am i saying i'm stupid actually <laughs> um i was thinking about going array actually but i feel like there's some solid ad's that i could still go so yeah i i would agree with that analysis oh okay 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 then who do i go here Do we do we know if Spyrex and UG are playing the entire split? We don't, do we? I think we do. I think, well, they, they announced their NACL roster. So I assume five are like starters, and there might be like one or two people that are like their subs, but I feel like they won't be able to change too much, at least NACL. CLO might change, but I think okay. this is their NACL roster. I think I, I, think I have to take Spyrex. I, I think that is like the the necessary okay. choice in mid lane right now. Um, I'm not going to lie. I kind of forgot that he was playing mid, so that might have changed my strategy. Yeah, but that's our that's our MU selection. Cool. Um, so I'll I think you actually you actually come out very good. Now yeah. that now that Spyrex is I playing mid, fine with Spyrex. Now the question is, if I pick, I think uh, who could you? So you're you have a top laner. I and a mid laner. Laner. We we have the same things right now. So. Yeah. I think I'm. Hmm. There's a way that you could fuck me here. No. No, there's not. There's not a way that you could fuck me. Never mind. We're chilling. Um. So with that being said, I think I want. Okay, grapes. Do I be spicy or like just just like do I mean pick the people instead of you? You want to win. That's all I'm saying. I, well, I, I, I'm always spicy. It's all so sweet go, pets, go, and it go, always goes go, really terrible go, for spicy. me. It could work. It could work. Oh, am I going to be really... I, like, like I, I'm trying to think. This might be a value pick. Okay. Go for I'm it. I'm going to take Rock Boom. I was thinking about that, actually. I'm going to take Rock Boom. Instead of Wixie or Lens, who are staring me in the face right now and making me potentially regret all my life choices. But I, I, think... I think of this as a value pick. Like, like I think if I was if I was to pick anyone on Lit, I really want Rock Boom, where mm -hmm. I would be fine with, like, other players on AoE, for example. 
I think no, I think that makes a lot of sense actually. Um I was thinking like, oh, if you lock me out of like going with an AoE or or something, then I could go rock boom for lit. Um I think he's probably one of the best players like on that he's probably one of the more most exciting players, I should yeah, say, yeah, on that yeah. team. Um and interesting enough, he hasn't played yet. So if we're going by like um expectations kind of still in the air for for rock boom so still a lot of we got we got, we've gone through half the teams we still have somebody from team liquid aoe um and i think actually what i'm gonna do here is go for both of them so i'm gonna take kim down here at support Ooh. and then i'm gonna take um uh, wixie as my ad character you took kim down over keel I did. I think there are stronger junglers, and I'm worried about some. If things go all the way to my last pick being support, interesting. I'm okay with like the rest of the jungler. If that really sense. okay. Well, then, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna take Daption and Winnie. Like, I'm not gonna think Th those are the guys that I definitely want for. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna take Daption, Daption and Winnie here. And Winnie, who, as we mentioned earlier, had a very good split, or a very good first game against Team Liquid, I should say. Uh, mm -hmm. So those, that's your full team. Overall, Hawk, what are you feeling right now? Feeling good? I feel pretty good, you know? I I, I, I got a lot of players that, that I, I like, I think are very good. I'm I'm really surprised. So the way you could have, I, what I was worried about, but I realized I, don't, I didn't think you could do it, is I wanted one of either Keel or Winnie on this rotation, and I assumed that I could get both. So... I'm pretty happy that I was able to snag Winnie on four or five. Um, I was a little bit surprised. I I I expected I expected you to take Keel, but but Will is the I I was expecting Mirage Alliance to be like the probably the last team selected or wildcard wildcard or Mirage Alliance to be the last team selected. Um, and because of that, I was more confident in their their junglers than their respective supports interesting so, so you you would rather have kim down will than keel dardock is basically what you're telling me uh, i think so i i think i think there definitely was a chance to take take keel and that like i, I could have been okay with dardock but i'm okay with this as well i think will is gonna have a solid split in terms of fantasy because um you know prismal and alorum are both not super strong side players and so um he'll have the opportunity to go and, and impact a lot of a lot of lanes yeah i mean that's fair i i probably would have gone keel keel dardock but that's why that's why we do this and now grapes can beat me at yet another mini game and make me really, and not yet really sad i do think yeah. you you getting spyrax and 30 is a little OP. um i should have thought about that i kind of forgot that that spyrax was on the table before i went yeah to for my selections but i'm over, i'm happy overall I think, all right I think yeah no I, okay. I respect it i mean hey it's it's pretty spicy like you, you took a risk and i i respect that i i feel i like my team but now grapes we have to move on to the part two of this part two which is where <laughs> we do the picks and bans which this can yeah. mean a lot in fantasy lcs i see you rearranging some stuff down there so i can give you a minute did you no, want to put our players in like role order so that they're next to each other maybe or is that like too much work? Well, that's probably a good idea, actually. Um, yeah. So I'll give you another. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep talking to the people for another second. We can maybe cut this. But um, oh yeah, I I think I think um, man, I'm I'm, yeah. This is this is gonna be fun. I'm rearranging right now. We we're basically done, so we can we can cool. get into this right now. Just, how do we want to do cut, it in I'll terms of? This. <laughs> how do we want to do it in terms of like taking turns? Like, uh... first, I don't know. I guess I go first because you go first, okay. and then you you can I let's say this you go first, and on your turn you can either pick or ban any champion, and then on my turn I can pick or ban two champions, and then two champions, and like we'll just snake it. You want to do that? Uh, or maybe okay. maybe maybe on you your just first pick turn, a play should we just pick a player? But you want to just like go in order like top to bottom and just like pick a player. That 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 yeah. works too because we also can pick and ban the same champions. Like there's yeah. no restriction there. So yeah, okay. we we can just go like the top yeah, to bottom. That works. That works. Okay. okay. Um, all right. uh, I'm, pick, gonna, I'm just gonna pick. switch slide and then you can. Do you want to say like pick goes first for both? Uh, does or it matter? Do we... Because it, are are are, are we not just going like? Same champ? um i guess maybe like, let's say if within I pick Jax, 
Does that mean you can ban Jax on the same player? Let's no? say within each... Yeah, let's say we can't do that, right? So, like, I could also pick Jax for Surti, but I couldn't ban it for Faisal if you picked it. Does that make sense? Or maybe, maybe, maybe we don't want to do that. Maybe it's like... If what maybe within each role, within each role, a champion can only be picked or banned once. Let's say that, okay? Okay, sure. Yeah, within each if, role, a champion can only be picked or banned once. So should we do ban, ban, pick, pick then? Like bot, bot, and top, like like top. I think band, what we should do. I think what we should do band. is like you start, you pick a player, and. I don't know. Like I, you, I think w let's do this. Um, we go roll by roll. Yeah, let's go roll by roll. So you start with top lane, and I want you to either pick Faisal's champion or ban against Surti. Then I do both, and then you do the like the last one, and then I'll go first for the next one, and we'll alternate. Does that work? That works. Okay. Okay. That all works. right. All right. I'm gonna switch the slide, and then you can get us started. Okay. Yep. Ready. We've now made it to our part two of this fantasy NACL draft. Our part 2.2. Uh, yeah, where we pick and ban each of these uh, players' champions that can affect their score throughout the split. So basically, if the uh, the champion that you quote unquote picked gets played by that uh, by that player, they will get bonus points for that game. If it is banned, they will get like basically reduced points for that game. Yep. So there, there's a, this can influence a lot. Anyone that's played fantasy LCS on Sleeper, like this is where the mo real meat and potatoes of the league are. So you got to make sure you pick and ban the right champions. And again, since this is all split long, the meta might change a fucking ton before this yeah. actually comes out. Oh, God. I am now realizing that this can definitely impact some of my decisions. I'm going to start here because I picked second in draft. Uh, we're going to go lane by lane. So we'll start with the top lane here. Um, and I will go with a ban against Surti, and I'm going to ban away. Oh God, um, I'm gonna ban Cassante. He played that, it. A, that's he a pretty good ban. That's a pretty good ban. It's so one... always gonna be broken, no matter how much they nerf it. So that's my. Yep, we all know. 5,400 uh, HP, 100 armor, 100 magic resist, one second cooldown. Yeah, but it, it, it's relevant. I feel like that's a pretty good ban. Um, and so one rule that we should add a caveat to as well is each champion can only be picked or banned once per roll. So for example, since now that Cassante's banned, I could not pick it for Surti. I also could not ban it against Faisal. But just I, I could pick it for Spyrax if I think he's going to play a lot of Cassante mid. You know, like that. that's right. the way this is going to yeah. work. So now I get to go pick and ban both uh, things. So I am going to ban. Here's the question. Do we think Udyr Top is going to be that relevant for all season? Probably not. I'm going to ban. It feels a little flavor of the month. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to ban Rumble against you. I was thinking Rumble. I'm, I was a little bit worried about how much it would be like picked or banned in the actual Champion, yeah. like, meta overall, but it's been strong for a while. So I It's been strong, that. and it, it's one of those champions, I feel like he'll be just good, be good on the new season unless, like, Riot really hard nerfs it. The, I, honestly, the bigger question is whether or not Rumble just gets picked or banned, like, because he's kind of a weird champ that doesn't work in, like, every single team style, so that might be more relevant. Um, yep. Okay, and then I'm going to take a flyer here on my pick. I want okay. every single time Surdy to place Fiora to just be, like, the best That's... Game. That's a bold yeah. take. Which he might just never play it. Like, we might never see Surdy Fiora, or he'll play it, like, a few times and go, like, Thanos mode. I'm banking on the latter. <laughs> you say that? Fiora was his most played champ in 2023, surprisingly. So, oh, okay, then I'm just um, based. <laughs> it's a very good choice. I, I, was do, I was doing a look at some stats. I'm I sorry, was thinking, I'm... like, one of the split pushers. Like, like Jax, you know, another one. But Yeah, Jax Surrey was an option for me, Surrey definitely. Faisal? I have to pick something for Faisal now. Let me yep. let me think about this a, a second. I he's been known for a lot of things. Known for tanks, he's been known for fighters. Faisal, but I Faisal's think, hard to pick and ban because he's played a lot of different stuff. Like, yeah, I think just going off of like last year as well as like kind of what has been popular recently, Olaf again. He just plays it a lot. Um, like on he played a lot on fear. 
Um, he played it a lot on FlyQuest. We haven't really seen him this split yet, so okay. who knows? Right. But that's my choice. Is this because we just saw TC Porsche play two games of Olaf uh, for UST Grapes? <laughs> um, I guess maybe a little bit, but we also see we've also seen Faisal play. No, Faisal and play very well on it as well. So Fe Faisal's an Olaf um, enjoyer for sure. Yeah. I, okay, I, I think that's a good pick. We we. A lot of we carries both picked here. like the niche. We both picked the niche things and banned yeah. the meta things. So. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like your ban was better than mine though, so I'm a little bit nervous. But right. I get to go first now, um. Yeah. So I can either pick or ban. I'm going to pick Xin Zhao for Winnie. That's fair. I just think it's. I I feel like it'll be good, and it's such a. The Winnie, only reason Winnie I'm a little Zhao. worried. The only reason I'm a little worried is because I feel like it might be nerfed a lot very soon. So you're gonna pick that pick it fuck it why, why not yeah maybe i should have picked something like gragas that like winnie is never going to be nerfed because it's like weird and then winnie likes to pick it randomly but eh, we're gonna go with it maybe i can Very cash out choice. early in the season <laughs> great so i also just realized by the way that two of these players are going to play more games than everybody else on this list <laughs> um i think we can just do the whole season like i know we're okay, not like, like retroactively right yeah we could just i, I like so that i get bonus right points for the game that winnie played in I, I guess so. I okay. I, I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right with that right now. Sure. Uh, I'm not. Sure. I'm not gonna take that into account. As I'm not gonna it. take it into account either. We'll 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 handshake on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do what do I want to pick for Will and ban for Winnie? The Jinzao is a very solid one. I think Trundle is like very strong right now. Hey, Trundle but is okay. In my opinion, I want to like pick ban it. I don't know if it's really that sleeper because I feel like people know, but Trundle is really disgustingly turbo broken right now. But part yeah. of it is top lane Trundle is back as well. Oh man, the the rift, the uh, sorry, um, hole breaker. Yeah. On how how right does now? Gara Scion like, player <laughs> just show him a picture of top lane Trundle? <laughs> um, huh. I'm thinking as well because, oh man, I'm I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go Vi. I think Vi with Thunder Sky has still been pretty strong. I'm going to ban it against Winnie because I think that's something. Oh, that's okay. The ban. I thought you were going to pick that for Will. All right. I think All it right. could go either way, honestly. Yeah, I think it could. Um, And then I have to pick something for Will as well. I could go like Lee Sin because it's always going to be kind of strong. But that I will go and on the season felt so bad. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, might, I mean, I, but I, you're I welcome to pick it. Bit. You're welcome no, 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 no. I think actually, no, you you convinced me. <laughs> Let's go. Um, <sighs> That just means Riot's going to buff it. Their, their favorite anime main character. Let's go Poppy for Will. Ooh. Spicy. I think Poppy's pretty strong right He's now. I'm expecting that. It's not going to get too hard nerfed, and it's an early game champion that I know Will likes to play a lot of early game champs. Fair. What do I want to ban? I should have been thinking about this while you were mulling it over. I, I, I need like a list of champions in front of me. Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, pull, I'm gonna pull that up. I, it's like, like the the League of Legends. I'm just like grabbing the yeah. uh, from Google right now. So, like, I feel like I, <laughs> it's hard to like think of champions. Um, okay, I need to think. Um, against Will. Hmm. I'm going to take a flyer on this okay. a little bit. A champion that okay. I think is really strong in the current patch and probably won't be nerfed soon because she hasn't been meta in a little bit. I think it's a champion that Will would play. I'm going to try to predict the meta. This is for content. Okay. Lilia ban. Lilia, from what I've I've talked to, I've talked to Frost Forest, um, jungler for Lotus. He thinks that Lilia is very strong. The fact that you can go Riftmaker and Leandries both now that champion, champion loves those items is very very good so i think that that's a and very solid better than it was last season i think this is a better ban against different players but i do think it's still pretty good well i mean yeah so. but like i went for it so. yeah no i think i think it's a good option um so that's our jungle let's go to mid i already know what i'm doing for my first thing i'm picking a collie for young okay um that guy is so good at this champion I didn't I'm, even think about this, but he had a very good Akali game, even though they lost against uh, FlyQuest. So that's going to help yeah. as well. Yep, he uh, he dropped a nuke. That's a good pick. Uh, I feel like that's kind of a good denial from Spyrax as well. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Um, mm -hmm. Damn. I'm going to ban Irelia 
Um, Young has been known for that champion since like 21. Uh, it's not very good right now, but it's Irelia. Riot's going to buff it, and everyone's going to play it again. Um, Interesting. And I'm going to... I might be getting lost in the sauce in all my bands here, but I feel like there's an easy pick for you here, but I I, I could be No, it, it, there is. I should be I, I it's a zero, right? Like Maybe. Is that not what you're thinking of? <laughs> I I don't know. You gotta do I mean I'm picking a zero, yeah. <laughs> okay, that was my pick. But uh, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the champion is just uh, broken right now. Champion's strong, Spire's very good at it. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. To, to and it's it. also like one of those champions that's gonna get nerfed and then everyone's still gonna play it for like five months. So like yeah. I, you know, like Um, I'll go Yon here. Yone Ooh, is very strong with these items. Okay. Right now. All right. Okay, we're both Spire's reaching on our bands a little bit. That makes me feel better. It's been very strong. I think also I've been influenced by seeing a lot of good performances of it in Swiss this last week, but champs. Okay. Now I have to either pick or ban. Uh, I'm going to ban Varus against uh, Wixie. Get the champ out of here. <laughs> smart choice. Very smart choice. Wixie's good at... Wixie, uh, we've seen him have some very solid Varus games, especially in this... Uh, like recent combine, right? Like some of the the Immortals Winter Show. Yeah, Wixie is is pretty good at the champ. Okay, now I got to pick and ban against Rock Boom. Um, I'm gonna do something interesting. I'm gonna go Ezreal for Wixie because I think that champion just got buffed on fourteen two, and they're gonna it's gonna be in the meta for a while. Interesting, interesting. Um, even though it's not probably the champ I think I associate with him the most, associate with him the most. Um, mm -hmm. and then my ban against Rock Boom. I could either do like what's what I know him for most, or I could try to like predict the meta a little bit, because I don't think the champion that he's known for the most is very popular right now. I would agree. Oh, now it's an interesting one. I'm gonna do it. I'll go Zaya. I'll ban the Zaya. I don't think it's very. It's not. It's not that strong right now. We had we saw it a little bit. I think Taco played it uh, during Swiss, but it is. Uh, champion that Rock Moon is very good at, so we're gonna take that away from. Him. It's a good ban. I was thinking of picking that, actually, even though it's not that good right now. I mean, it's like fine, but oh, what do I want to? I don't actually know what I want to do here. I really, I'm at an impasse. <laughs> I feel like you can't go wrong with AD as long as you pick something I, that's I, like kind of. I feel like meta. that too. I. I'm just gonna. I'll, I'll pick Jin. I'll yeah, that's a strong. Jin. That's it's strong fine. right now. It, it'll probably still be good. It's getting some of its items nerfed, but like it should, should still be good. And I don't really I know what else I, to do. I can't remember any times that Rock Boom played Jin. I'd have well, to like because Jin was dog really shit last think. season. So there's also yeah. That. I'd have to like really think about. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think uh, according to Leakpedia has never played it in his career. Uh, according to like the Leakpedia game specifically until so. tomorrow. <laughs> They're manifesting it. I see. Yep. All right, we're at, we're down to support. I All have right. Kim down or Daption, and I am going to wait. Pick isn't it mine? Hot. No, it's not. It's yours. I'm a liar. Sorry. I, <laughs> I, was, I was worried for for a second. I'm gonna pick Rakan for Kim down. He's very good at that guy. I'm losing it, guys. It's eight thirty, and I've not had dinner, and I'm very I'm 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 uh, <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Rakan pick pretty good. Pretty good pick. I'm gonna pick Nautilus. <laughs> the most you basic can never go wrong. You can never go wrong with ever. <laughs> the most basic support pick ever. Uh I'm gonna ban. I'm gonna ban. Ooh, what do I want to ban? It's your last <laughs> pick. It's your last decision for this entire thing. This could make or break. This could make or break my season. Career. I can't yeah. lose another mini game against you. Uh, <laughs> Grapes, I'm going to ban Milio. Oh, that's a good one. I was thinking about Milio actually. I it's very about it It's very Daption popular. Well, but... Yeah, it's very popular right now. I'm worried very that he good. might be flavor of the month, but the champion's also kind of stupid broken. So like, I mean, you remember even like back in Seal 2023, like that that was a champion that was very popular. It yep. was specifically as a like Karthus counter, I believe, right? Uh, sorry, I banned Milio oh, against Kim Down, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
also <laughs> tired. Um, <laughs> we're, we're we've been grinding this week. I'm just thinking about I was thinking about Daption the whole time. I was trying to think about Daption, very good enchanter player. Mm. Do I try to find an enchanter or something that's a little bit more meta right now? Um, oh, Karma. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. Hey, Greg, can I also awesome. can I cheat? Can I pick Milio and ban Nautilus as opposed to picking Nautilus and banning Milio? This could really bite me in the ass. Okay, way, but all right, here we yeah, go. I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. Okay, well, we'll do a switch. A little switcheroo. I Nautilus, like Nautilus was like a, kid, uh, a so I almost said Nautilus was a Kim down one trick last year. <laughs> Nautilus was a Kim down one trick. Yep, <laughs> you get the sentiment. <laughs> that, so that Nautilus I, guy, very very good Kim yeah. down player. <laughs> <laughs> so uh i i would expect mr kim down to pick a lot of nautilus <laughs> <laughs> yeah no and i think uh engage is definitely where he's done a played a lot more of at least recently yeah i, mean, I would agree daption always known for his enchanter play so i was happy for the karma ban i think the milia makes a lot of sense um yeah, especially with Lens, who likes to play a lot of hyper carries, I think I think that makes a lot of sense for for wild card or sorry for fear as a whole. So that's our draft. Honestly, I think I I think I might have griefed the the player pick phase a little bit. But I I'm very happy okay, with I how the, the I griefed the champion. Pick. I'm very happy with how I did in the champion. So I hope that I get some pop offs from some. I had to sandbag a little bit to make this entertaining. Right, no. right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just going to win anyway because I am the better analyst, of course. You know, Salt Street Bets would say otherwise, I'm saying. Uh, when we got to bring that the, back at the, some point, too. You know how I did the, the content with the Banded Kittens bot lane and I kept a Hawk Int counter? Yeah. Yeah, you could maybe tick that one up for, like, the Lilia ban. But, like, it... <laughs> I, I, I saw the, I see the vision. I see the yeah, I, I think it yeah, actually. Yeah. I, think it, I think it's definitely we'll reasonable. See what happens. Yeah. Um. I guess we'll check back overall throughout the year. Like we'll just every couple of weeks talk about it, like in our headlines, and then a big final recap after we do all of our math and see who our winner is. Um. I I think this is cool because we didn't have to. We even though it's just the two of us, we still couldn't just like pick from the two best teams. We had to go a little route. Um. And then it's also like our chance to like predict the meta a little bit. So. Um, I'm excited to follow this this little this little pick band phase. Let us know how you think we did down down below. Yeah, let us know. Should be a lot of fun. These are our complete fantasy NACL teams. We are the first people on planet Earth to play fantasy NACL. So if there's any question about how big of super fans we are, then uh, you can take it with a grain of salt because we don't want to hear it. Um, <laughs> it's been it's been a long episode. Um, I've been Hawk. That's been Grapes. Check us out on all of our social media at Salty Run Pack Pod, as well as at Hawkcast at Speedy Grapes on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, we'll see you all next week after another great round of games. The action and any developmental is heating up. Peace.